So welcome people of God. So I want to release some um some insights, some revelation, some coaching, right? That's that's a key word for me right now because when I initially, God is so faithful. God is so faithful. So I'm not even going to say that this is going to be a quick word. Um, but I just pray that you are here and you're in a place where you can just listen and absorb and take in everything that I'm going to speak to you um, that God has given to me, right? So, you know, this is kind of like some fresh oil. And then some of it is some stuff that I've really just been kind of walking in. It's not new to me. So let me just say this real quick, right, about how much I just, I just love the practicality of God. So when I first moved to Myrtle Beach, like it was actually June the 14th and we, me and the girls came to get the keys and stuff. Um, hallelujah. That night that I was here, the Lord started to give me a massive download about the direction that he wanted me to go in ministry. And it was really good. And it was like, well, and I, I couldn't even go to sleep that night. And I wanted to go to sleep because I had to get up at 5 a.m. the next morning to go back to Atlanta. And But I couldn't go to sleep. I was just getting in everything the Lord was saying. And so let me say this, right? Because people ask me this all the time. So God has not released me to do one-on-one -on -one coaching, right? Like that is not something that God has said to me is my vein. Not, not that there's timing on it. God is like, no, that's not the direction that you're going. But God did say to me, right? Like, I need you to create something that what I've taught you and what I tell you, people have access to. And on this platform, God does not allow me sometimes, not sometimes, God does not allow me to release the um, depth of the insight that God has given to me. Um, God just hasn't. And so even on here, when I release stuff, sometimes people are like, okay, I hear you, but I just still need more. And so I'm really trying to like, to execute in the natural on what God has given me. Like I created a website. Um, it's, it's not live because like, I just need help. Like with the, with the functionality of it. Like I went on it, I did it, you know, everybody was like, it's so easy. <sighs> yeah, no. And even the way the Lord told me to create the coaching packages, right? Like like different topics that the Lord has given to me, right? And how the Lord wanted me to lay it out. Even God giving me the pricing of it, right? God is so faithful. And a lot of times people have an issue with that. But let me tell you, I'm here for it because I just understand the kingdom of God. And I just, I'm okay with it. And so anyway, I was like, thank you, Jesus. Like, like even the pricing of it. You understand like God is so faithful and again <laughs> I'm like Lord I'm really trying and like I've been on um I've been on YouTube looking at how to like create courses and stuff and I'm just like oh this is not my vein Lord you gotta send me help like you gotta send me some help but I want you all to know that and let me tell you even even where I struggled with saying okay is this is this God is this me in the, I've talked to you, if you've been here any amount of time, I've talked to you about my background in corporate America. I've talked to you about, um, you know, being promoted in corporate America to, to the level that I was at. And even when I started this channel, right, people would call me a coach. And that is what I did in corporate America. That is, that is how I meant I coached reps into winning. I told them what to say. I told like, that is what I did. I, that is what I did. And let me tell you, right? Yes. If, and where, even in my own natural mind, I'm like, God, did you really want me to do this though? Yesterday, a woman of God who is here all on her own sent me a message because she, she was having a moment. Right. And I just gave her a quick word that God had given to me about her. It wasn't really, you know, it was just really quick. We were just having a quick interaction through Instagram. And she said to me, she said, you are the best manager. You are the best coach. And God was like, see, I told you, I told you, I told you to create the, the coaching packages. I told you God has given to me specific prayers for people when it comes to marriage restoration and when it comes to just you know even that word I released talk the talk like there were people that still functionally didn't know how to how to talk the talk they didn't know how to say 
go to what they didn't want to see in their lives and they didn't know how to call forth what they do. And so that's coming, people of God. Like, and I really feel like almost oppressed from God, like do it, do it, do it. Okay, so I just needed to say that in the name of Jesus. Okay, so with that being said, I wanna talk um, about what the Lord was speaking to me about when it comes to, when it comes to, okay, so help me, Lord, help me to say this. Okay, so, so this is how I'm going to say it. Because as a manager, right, as a senior manager, as a, as a coach, right, when I would coach my supervisors, right, and I even went in my notepad and I was just looking at like me, even in my mind, like late at night when I know I wasn't at work, just talking through conversations that I was preparing to have with the leader, right? I I would know the leader. I would know what their strengths was, what their weakness was. And as, as a prophetic person, I see stuff like people can reach out to me and I see it. And even at, even in corporate America, I had this, I was telling somebody last night, they used to call me the behavior whisperer, like that show, the dog whisperer, because I could locate what was going wrong with the rep, and I would tell the supervisor, that's what you need to fix. Or even when I was a supervisor, that's what I would fix. Like the rep would think, well, the problem is my attitude. No, the problem isn't really your attitude. The problem is something as easy as your tone. Like, I think you have a great attitude. It's just the words that you use. And sometimes it would feel like splitting hairs with people, but it would work. And that was why I went as far as I went. That's why I was promoted as many times as I was. That's why I was rewarded, right? Because God gave me that gift, that oil, that like, and, and here's another thing that I love about God. I love the practicalness of God. I love the supernaturalness of God, but I also love the practicalness of God. And I think sometimes we, we, we don't make it plain enough. And that, that's another thing. That's my gift. Like you got to make it plain because if you preach to me about favor and you don't tell me how to flow and how to operate and how to function in favor, what's going to happen? If you're standing for your marriage, right? Let me give you this nugget. If you're standing for your marriage. Okay. Thank you, Jesus. Let me help you. Let me help you. See, we, we really, we, we hear, we hear the scripture. We know the scripture. We struggle not against flesh and blood, but when you're in it, regardless of the relationship, when you're in it, it's the attack is on you. The attack is you, you're hurt. You're, you're mad. You're angry. You're defeated. And so even you're like, how could the struggle not be with flesh and blood? I'm flesh and blood. She's flesh and blood. He's flesh and blood. How could it not be about flesh and blood? Because guess what? It, it's not about flesh and blood. It is about intrusion. It is about deception. It is about the principalities from the work of hell coming against your marriage. And that is what you have authority to stand against. That is what Jesus said in Luke 10 and 19, that you have the authority to come against and nothing can harm you. If your relationship is hurting your feelings, you're being subject to harm and that is a violation for you as a child of God. You can come against that thing. You can stand up and come against that thing. Now let me help you too because you're like, well, I've, I've been coming against it. Okay, so keep coming against it. Keep coming against it. Even now, knowing, knowing the fate that, that, that Satan has, he's still in operation. He's the devil. Jesus says there's no truth in him. He is the devil. He is the he is the epitome of all things wrong, right? He doesn't want to give up. He doesn't want to stop. He doesn't want to move. But when you stand in your authority and you stand in your right, the Bible promises us, the Bible promises us that when we resist the devil, he must flee. He must flee. When you tell that thing that at the name of Jesus, I resist you and you must flee, it has to. That's the Bible. Another thing I'm going to say real quick, right? Because God gave me this to do as a coaching course. So I'm just, I'm giving y'all some free little stuff right here. Like this right here. And, and let me just say this. I'm always going to have this platform. I'm always going to release words. I'm, this is always going to be here. This is always going to be here. But for those people that really feel like, like, no, I really just need something that you maybe can't say here. Then I got something for y'all. But let me tell you, right? Because God gave me this nugget too. 
when Jesus goes into the wilderness, Jesus goes into the wilderness weaponized. Jesus does not go in the wilderness and have that contact with the enemy directly, not weaponized. Number one, he had the Holy Spirit with him, right? Guess what? That same spirit is on the inside of us. Jesus was fasting. Okay, that's a weapon. Jesus had the word of God coming out of his mouth. That's a weapon. Jesus was full of truth and grace. That's a weapon. Do you understand what I'm saying? And when it got, guess what? And the devil still wouldn't give up. And finally, finally, Jesus was like, get away from me. Get away from me. Get away from me. You are the redeemed of the Lord. So the Bible says you need to say so. The work of hell is not supposed to come in your house and say, let me knock your marriage down. Let me knock your relationship with your kids down. Let me knock your health down. And I get it. I get it that, yeah, Romania, you're saying that. But when you're in it, it's scary. It hurts. It sucks. Hey, I hear you. I hear you. I'm right there with you. I'm right there with you. I'm, I'm, when I tell you literally, I'm right there with you. But listen, as children of the king, there is a portion that is our right. And either we are going to operate like the children of Israel and stay content with where we are, or we're going to face these giants and inhabit our land. That's just it. That's just it. Again, right? We're, we're either going to be children of the king with a covenant that, the, that, that they didn't have in the Old Testament, and we are going to demand our rights. We are going to demand our stuff. We are going to stand on the word of God. We are going to know that absolutely nothing shall by any means. I'm not getting ready to be standing here and still thinking, man, I hope I make it. No, 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 no. I'm standing from a place of victory. I'm standing from the place of, oh, okay, that's how it's supposed to go. Okay. Okay, so yeah. You have moments where you cry. Okay. Let me tell you, hallelujah, <laughs> hallelujah. Okay. I think the scripture is Deuteronomy 32 and 18. I don't, I don't have my Bible right in front of me, right? But there is a moment where, when, um, I, I'm pretty sure, like, I don't, I think Moses is coming down from the mountain because he just got the, the Ten Commandments for the second time, I think. But nevertheless, the people are making, the, like, you can hear the people, right? And Joshua is like, what is going on? Are the people going crazy? And let me tell you what Moses says. Moses says, that's not a shout of victory. That's not the cry of defeat. That is the sound of celebration. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Moses is like, listen, victory has a shout, right? Like, like, like it's, 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 it's a shout, but it's not the same thing as a sound. When you are celebrating and you are in, in your place, that's a sound, that's a sound. You understand what I'm saying? That's a sound. It's like when people come on here, right? If I, if you've been here long enough, if I never, if randomly, right, somebody tried to, okay, thank you, Jesus. Y'all know these people be scamming because y'all know how I sound. Even through here, y'all know me using emojis. Y'all know me saying, okay. Y'all know me saying, hey, y'all know my sound, Y'all know I'm not getting ready to come on here saying, hey, beloved. Like, y'all know that's not me. Y'all know. Y'all know I'm extra. Y'all know I'm passionate. Y'all know I'm crying. Y'all know my sound. Celebration has a sound, and your portion is to live in it. Your portion is to live in it, child of God. The shout of victory is good, but it don't last as long as the sound of celebration. So I just want to come on here and let you know that there is a portion that belongs to you. Like, it, but for you to live in it. Jesus says, I came that they may have life and life more abundantly. Not a moment more abundantly. Not a day more abundantly. Not a week more abundantly. Not a year more abundantly. Not a season more abundantly. But life more abundantly. Life more abundantly. I pray in the name of Jesus that that in this message, right? Because again, this was just some insight. This wasn't really a word. This was just some insight. But I pray that you determine that, listen, I want to live in the sound of celebration. I decree to live, to live in life more abundantly. People always want to tell me, you always talking about life goes well. You always talking about it's just going to be every single day. Like, come on, it got to rain sometimes. It been raining. 
I came out the, what are you talking about? A storm's got to come sometime. The, Egypt was the storm. The wilderness was the storm. What are you talking about? <laughs> I said this on a video when I first started making these videos. If there was a quota for uh, just having a sucky life, mine is filled. Mine is filled. Do you understand what I'm saying? If there was a quota for warfare and waiting, I'm done. I'm done. <laughs> quota filled. Like literally. So I just pray that you determine that we are walking in this shift. And you know what this reminds me of? Oh gosh. In like at, at Verizon, right? We used to have mid-year conversations. And the mid-year conversation was the most important conversation because it was a conversation that you had with employees where you talked about the first half of the year and what they did well and what they didn't do. And then you talked about the rest of the year and, and where we really needed to press in our heels and, and dig in for a strong finish because, okay, thank you, Jesus, because it was the end of the year that counted. It was where your numbers were on December 31st that actually talked about the bonus you were going to get the next month. So listen, we having a mid-year conversation, right? And I want you to think about where you've been, what's going on, and just determined I'm getting ready to live in the sound of celebration. So I love y'all. I pray that this word blesses you. I pray that this was, I don't even know what I'm going to title this, right? But I just pray that you got something here that just really makes you determined. That's what I want. Determined to live in the sound of celebration. Be blessed.